So this is a get started video so that once you download CinePunch, you have a good idea of how to organize, download, install, and just get you started with all the different tool sets. Now, once you download CinePunch and you go into your folder, I do suggest that you watch this quick tour, and this is going to give you a guide of where things are folder per folder and just get you acquainted with how things are organized. Now in the initial download of CinePunch, there are tool packs that you need to download. However, you don't need to download everything as I've uh, covered in the quick tour. And as I will say here, you do have a video catalog for which you can log in and just download one file at a time if you don't have the space or don't have the internet bandwidth. So now if you want to download the big packs, you will see inside the big pack folder or in each individual big pack folder, such as CineDust, Fractal, Glam, Haze, Hypnotinks, and Sound Punch, as well as Anamorphic Creams. These we do have to download the packs because they are too large to zip them up and bundle into one pack. Now I do suggest you have roughly about 200 gigs of space if you decide to download all of the H.264 pack files. And I've also individualized them into smaller packs for faster downloads. So this is the part that may take a little bit of time is the downloading, but I promise you it's worth it and you're going to have more tools than you can imagine. Now, in some cases, we already have a bunch of tools that are provided inside the initial download of CinePunch, such as LUTmaster, and we will get into a quick install on that later on, Trailer Punch, Transition Punch, I'm going to have our preset file in there, our Disruption VFX Suite, and our Filmmaker VFX Suite. So now in this case, when you want to start downloading your packs, you can either go to the Big Packs main folder and download, or if you decide to go to each individual folder, in this case, I'm going to go to the Anamorphic Creams. You're going to click on this PDF, and it's just going to provide you with a download link. So you want to click that, hit Download, and that's going to, by default, go into your Downloads folder, whether you're Mac or PC. So while that's downloading, I'm going to take you into your CinePunch Elements library. Now you're going to see that you have an After Effects, Final Cut, and Premiere folder. In this case, we're just going to concentrate on Premiere. And you don't need to use this project file. Uh, you can work however you want if you want to just work on a per pack basis or per tool basis. but in this case, I thought I'd provide a project file. This is going to be for Premiere CC 2013 and above, where to get you started with elements already installed into a project. And as you download new elements or big packs, you can just import them into this project. And then whatever project you may be working on in the future, you can just import this entire CinePunch elements library project, and it will just make it easier for you to access everything at once. So initially we're going to have our big packs that are just going to remind us that we need to download and import. But now you do have certain assets that are already provided, such as your disruption assets, your filmmaker VFX suite assets, trailer punch, leak punch. But we're going to go ahead and we want to start to import the big packs that we downloaded. We're going to go to our downloads and once we've downloaded our big pack folders again by default they will more than likely be in your downloads folder for your pc or mac and we just want to be organized so in this case you can see i have all my big packs are downloaded and i just want to place these in the proper folder so the fright night big pack i'm going to place in the halloween folder my Cine Dust pack, I'm going to place into the Cine Dust folder. Anamorphics into the Anamorphic folder. I'm just drag and dropping these in the proper folders provided. 
and that way you have everything consolidated and organized and you just know where everything is instead of having everything dispersed into different folders and different hard drives. And again, this is if you choose to download all the big packs at once. All right, so now we're all set. We have everything placed into the proper folders. And I'm going to go back into my Elements Library in Premiere, and I'm just going to import these folders one by one. So I'm going to go to File, Import. I'm going to go into my CinePunch folder. And starting with Anamorphic Creams, going to my Anamorphic Creams. Just highlight it, hit the Import button, and that's going to import all the assets for Anamorphic Creams. Go to my CineDust folder. So I'm going to go to File, Import. Just highlight it, hit the Import button. Okay, everything's there. Just double click. All right. Now Fractal, File, Import. Go to my Fractal folder. All right, moving on to Glam. And go to the Haze Pack folder, select it and import. And we got our Sound Punch folder. Once that's downloaded, same thing, go to File, Import. You're going to have all these sound folders that should import subfolders. So if I go in here you can see everything's organized. Alright. Looking good. You're ready to go. So now once you've had all your elements and assets imported into your library you can save it. And then we can import this into any other project we may be working on. So in this case I'm actually going to open up a project in 2019. And when I want to import my Cine Punch folder. I'm just going to go to File, Import, and I'm going to select that Premiere project, Cine Punch project, Import entire project. There you go. So now you can start to play. And in this case, a lot of these big packs are going to be either background designs, uh, sound effects, of course. Uh, or overlays onto your videos. So I'm just going to kind of run through these really quick. So I'm going to open up uh, Glam here. Let me just switch to uh, preview mode. And I'm just going to grab something, drag and drop on here. Now some of these are going to be really long, so you're going to have a lot of time to play with and have all different elements just per shot. But I'm just going to lay this over and trim it. Uh, in this case, I'm going to select my mat, and I'm going to change the blending mode to add. Yeah, you can just see quickly that the effects are going to overlay right on top of the footage, and I can just expand this a little bit, slide this over. And you can start to just play around. In this case, I'm going to mess around and stack some just to show you how uh, quick you can harness certain effects on top of your footage. Going to Fractal. I'm just going to grab something quick. Just double click. I'm going to make an in and out point on this shot here. And drag and drop it on top. And 
and I'm going to change a blending mode to add. And I'm just going to go into anamorphic creams, I'll grab a uh, Lomo lens flare, and these are real anamorphic flares here. I'm going to double click on this and again just make an in point and an out point, drag and drop. I'm just going to drag this over. And again, highlight the Mac, go to my effects control, and change the blending mode to add. You can see I'm stacking a bunch of different mats very quickly here. And again, as you can see, you can stack these effects, get all different looks of uh, whatever design scheme you're looking for per shot or for your film or video. And I'm going to grab maybe some grain mats from my Filmmaker VFX suite. And I'm just going to get something rough and dirty so that you can better see it here. And if I lay this mat on top of my footage, you can see on the nested sequence we have a, a ton of room. This is uh, in the case that you want to overlay it onto a more elongated video. I think it's about 10 minutes for the nested sequences. And you do have the individual grain mats. So in this case, I'm just grabbing the nested sequence. So I got to cut this, of course, on this shot. Delete that. And then I'm just going to highlight my grain mat here. And I'm going to go into my effect controls. Scale it to frame size. And I might just have to uh, change this a little bit. And I'm going to change the blending mode in this case to multiply. And I'm using a, a grainy filter right here. So it's a little bit dark, but you want to change the opacity. Now, we also have our LUT Master and Transition Punch presets. So let's go ahead and install those. So in your effects control, you have your presets folder. And let me just go back into the Cine Punch folder for a minute. And in our LUT Master and Transition Punch folders, we have our preset files that we want to install. So when we want to do that, we go to our presets folder in Premiere, right click, select import presets, and let's start with the LUT master. So in our Cine Punch folder, go to your LUT master folder, installers, and you have your After Effects and Premiere folder, and you're going to have a 2013, 2017, and a 2019. So depending on what you are in, in this case I'm in 2019, so I want to select the 2019 preset. Here it is. So you'd be good to go, and you could start messing around with colors here. I'm just going to grab a color in my Pro Pack. So let's go ahead and install Transition Punch. Right click on your presets, import presets. Now let's go to our Transition Punch folder. And inside our Transition Punch, we have our install and there is our file. Select it. Doesn't matter what you're in, CS6, CC 2013. In this case, I'm in 2019. And here we are, here's all our different Transition Punch for now. And inside our folder of Transition Punch, you will have a preview guide. So double click on that. You can either download it or you can just access it online. In this case, I'm just going to access it online. And that way you have a uh, current preview of all the Transition Punch presets that are included so far. And again, these presets are built differently than you might be seeing on other templates. There's no stacking. You can mix and match these. In this case, we have our in and out point. So my out point is the shot on the left. My in point is the shot on the right. So imagine the transition starting leaving the frame and then the transition coming into the frame. So for example, glitch camera shake. 
out point, drop it on my left, and my in point, drop it on my right. Now in some cases, you want to overlap your shots. And again, I have tutorials for this that in the transition punch tutorials, there are specific videos that cover this, but I just thought I'd show you quick. So if I were to, in this case, go to something like bounce, swipe, you can see, now this could work and you have this kind of black happening momentarily, or you can overlap your shots. So if I overlay my endpoint with my out point, you can see how shot two starts to come in above shot one, right? So I'm just overlaying these two shots. So some of these transitions work just by overlaying your footage. Again, there's tutorials for that. Um, I'm going to remove this. And again, the beauty with transition punch and how it's built is that you can mix and match all these transitions. You're not uh, subjected to having to stick to one transition between two shots. So in this case, I can just grab one transition. I'm going to drop it on my out and I'm going to go into a the bounce and just add a different transition here. And you can see I got two different transitions working very quickly. So again, you can play around, experiment. You're not locked down to having to use a specific transition between two shots. And then just remember, you have video tutorials for all the different tool packs, presets, in your PDF. It's going to give you access to all the tutorials that you can either go per tool or per pack, or you can access all the tutorials. That's about it. Now go play around, experiment, create, enjoy.